we're live. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Talk about James Baldwin. Right here. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, it says we're live, but it's making a swirly thing. I feel like this happens every time that now I think we're live. So we're live? I don't know. We won't know until we rewatch it later. So I got to say good morning. Good morning. Um, if you chimed in a little earlier, I was talking about James Baldwin. It's something that I like to do. That so. is something you do. Good, good, morning. good morning. Good morning, Sean. Um, I need more of this water I'm drinking. Yeah, like that's we're just gonna. Good morning, everyone. So, um, for those who are joining us on our All of Us Monday Morning Live, yay! <laughs> it's like the Muppet Show. So today's conversation uh, is specifically about a video that we shared. We shared it last week online. We sent it by email to folks. We invited people to watch. Akala's presentation, Black History as the Lost History of Human History, which, whew, it was a lot. The first thing, though, was I really enjoyed that Akala said, I'm going to try to cram this all into 30 minutes, and it was an hour-long lecture. <laughs> yeah, he crammed a lot of history in a real tight space. He was never going to make it half an hour, something that we do. Sometimes. Yeah, I, it, I actually thought about the fact that I was like, we first were going to do 30 minute mornings and then we were like, no, 45 and often go over on time. So for those of you listening in who don't know exactly what we're talking about, we're talking about a gentleman named Akala from London who who is of African descent. Uh, clearly his name was uh, Kingsley James McLean Daly. Uh, he was born um, in 83, so he's a lot younger than me. He's these young people. <laughs> We love young people because we're uh, old. Yeah, and he's he's better known by his stage name, Akala. Um, he's also a rapper, journalist, author, activist, and poet from Kentish Town, London, and just all around dope dude. Like <laughs> dopey dope dope. Yeah, seriously, he had a lot of information to give us. So I'm not even sure. Um, so we were talking about like where do we even begin? Because there's there's so much in the video by itself and then the implications of the video which akala speaks about in the video but um we definitely gonna have to talk about here as well yeah yeah well yeah. said well said Jamaica. there's a lot to there's a lot to talk about and i don't know if we're gonna go over every single detail in 45 if, minutes but if there's something in there that you saw that you think we should be talking about just throw it in the chat we'll yes on. i will pay attention to the chat today <laughs> for sure so go ahead, get started. Where do you want to go? Uh, I mean, really the most basic of basics, Akala speaks about the lost history because it's intentionally not taught in factual say, ways. I was say, is it lost or is it... Hidden. Hidden, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For talk. Hidden and history. Again, African history. We are speaking specifically about African history, but it then has implications on U.S. history because... You know, our schools teach global history. Not, no. not, not accurately. No. But is it ignorance on the part of those who are writing, which was something Akala spoke about, that ignorance when you are living within the facts that you have is one thing versus when you have additional information and you still are just like, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to keep talking this bullshit over here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a combination of both things that happens throughout America history, Kuka. right? <laughs> America cut. Um, so like the so for I mean, just speaking about education, because he starts all the way back in ancient Egypt and he talks about B C wow. to the B C to the like hundreds, thousands of years B C. Uh <laughs> and the the thing that gets me was the number of times he says, you know, before Europeans were doing shit. He don't say it like that. Nah, he don't say it just like that. Don't but I think that. he might have that implication. But I, I think more importantly, it's just like, so the way he kind of, for me, so we're just talking about what we saw. Yes. So for me, I think the way he kind of just owns up the information and says, listen, I don't have to argue on either side of this thing. What do you think? Yeah. What do you see here? Yep. Right? When he described, for instance, all the different invasions, he talks about the history of the conservative of ancient Egypt being 3,100 years. 
in existence. That's 3,100 years in existence before the first known invasions from folks from outside. And what that implication actually means, then he talks about the the use of color in the monuments and in their and in their um, what do you call them uh, in their pictures? I'll just yeah, call them pictures. Yeah. I'm not I'm not an Egyptologist, not right? So in their pictures, in the color of red and black, and red had a significance. Same thing in Nubian culture. So does black. Like, what? Why are we always trying to? Why are you trying to co opt Egypt? Not just that. Like, also he he talked about that. Um, there would be these scientists using scientific methods yeah. to take skulls from ancient Egypt and do reconstructions so that yeah. you could reconstruct what the faces look like and point specifically that two different scientists using scientific methods from, I think one was France and one was some place. One someplace. was France, one was um, Britain. Okay, two different places and they had two different faces but they were both scientific methods. So if it's a scientific method, they should both come up with the same face. And in addition to that, there are pictures of dude. Like you don't have to reconstruct a skull when there are pictures on the wall of, of what homie looked like. And um, he looks like what would be considered a stereotypical black man with a broad nose and dark skin. Yeah. And I, and I th- In Egypt, let's be real in egypt so i just want to say like the implication of of what we're talking about you know stretches out and reaches to us today and how we're actually educated um you know someone has to pick the curriculum right someone has to pick the books someone has to get in and t- like hire the teachers and so someone is determining how we are educated and how we see our world our education we are socialized or educated i should say both at home in our community and in our schools and in Hollywood. And in Hollywood. And in Hollywood. Emotep. Emotep. We'll get there. It's Emotep. from the mummy. Oh, from the mummy? Oh, and he was he was what was he? White the same? Oh no. In the Arabian? movie it's a white oh, man. Sure. It's just he just looks like a white man. But Emotep, who really is the father of of modern medicine. Yes. That's right. I said Emotep. Y'all are thinking the mummy. You're like what the hell is Jamaica yeah, I talking about? I was first thinking of mummy too. I, that's okay. And I watched the college. <laughs> yeah. Did all of the math and science and medical stuff was a bona fide genius long before those white people that show up in Google when you type father of modern medicine. Um, and in G- Egypt, they had specialties of, of different things. There was just so much brilliance that has been erased and whitewashed from history including through Hollywood when casting directors choose to have white people play black history, historical figures, right? Um, To say, oh, well, they were European presenting. Oh, oh, wait, I'm going to be so ADHD with this today. It's going to be really bad. But there were just so many pieces in there that just keep popping in my head that Nefertiti's father was an African. Did y'all know that? Like, did you? I didn't know. Right? It's a piece of history. Yeah. And, like, it's not good, bad, or indifferent. It's just, it's knowledge, right? So if if Nefertiti is presented as, well, this is Egypt, and it must be white presenting, but her daddy wasn't black. So, of course, she had different features. And Akala spoke about, you know, after Egypt was already well established and Egypt wasn't even the oldest um, empire in Africa, uh, that then there were invasions and there was mixing and and those types of things. And of course, there's going to be different features of different people and blah, blah, blah. Um, But my dude, you just like changed the whole shit because no, what? Yeah, and, and I hear you. I hear you with your wedding. and I hear you with me. I'm sure anyone listening who didn't watch a collar. Please watch the video today. Please watch the video. And if you did watch the video, you got the same kind of like what that we have. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of the history being displayed. And I'm just trying to get back to like, why would you do that? So what reasons do we have to, to not talk about history in a way that actually reflects reality as opposed to some version of it that kind of excludes some people and then props up others? Why? I see somebody in the pool of white supremacist history. 
yeah, white supremacist history, white, white supremacist teaching, right, per, uh, perpetuates white supremacy. Oh, you have something for me? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just getting the link so I can drop it in there. Keep talking. Smart things. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm saying is that so white supremacist teaching perpetuates white supremacy. So not only does it allow, I think, uh, white people to perpetuate it in their own lives and then have a loftier or think of themselves in a different way, it also teaches us that we didn't have a history that we actually had. We value ourselves differently if we know what our history is, as opposed to being told that Africa is a continent that really didn't have any contribution except for Egypt. And then Egypt wasn't black. It was really some mixed match of either Arabian, European heritage that had nothing to do with you Africans. All you Africans down in Sub-Sahara, the ones that were captured and enslaved and brought to the Americas, are not the valued uh, uh, members of history and society. You did not have any great maps or monuments or, or, or civilization. You didn't do anything to deserve any kind of accolades, and therefore you are deserving of whatever treatment that you get. Think about this. Slavery in and of itself was a horrible evil. I mean, we can only imagine what it is to have full control over somebody and then be able to do whatever you want and have the entire society support whatever your decision is and treatment of that person. Because y'all weren't smart. Right. And, and in addition, to, but think about the justifications for that. Think about the justifications for how you can treat people in that way and then how that has lasted all the way out to today where we see George Floyd on the ground and someone's got his knee on his neck and then there's still people arguing. Oh, well, if he would have just listened. Think about that. Think about the way we're socialized and taught. That has a direct impact on what we see in our world, what we, how we act out in our world. What we think, what we say, and how we act are all connected in the way we have been taught and learned. And that, once again, is direct reflection, I think, of how we know our history, what society tells us what's valuable, how we grew up in our community, and we get into redlining and impoverished communities and all the other stuff with the violence we see in our hoods. Like, all this stuff is interconnected. It sounds complex because it is. And if you want to be a leader in this and if you want to make change, you have to get into the complexities of all of this work and understand that, listen, our education system itself is flawed and has caused a lot of harm. Is it flawed, though? It's flawed for us. It, it's, it ain't working for us. Right. It is working exactly the way it was designed to. Yes. To perpetuate capitalism. Let's be real. Uh, and to teach children very specific things about themselves and their world and the people around them, right? And it's it's kind of what, it's a part of what Akala spoke of is these were intentional in erasing facts and changing facts mm -hmm. and, and warping or just completely, like the erasure, right? Mm -hmm. Like just, no, we're not telling anybody this. Yeah. It's not even something that's going to come up. Um, deciding, like you said, what is in our textbooks, what children are taught mm -hmm. to allow control of society. Because mm -hmm. Baldwin said something about don't ask too many questions. We, we need society to, yeah. to remain calm. Don't ask too many questions. Don't because ask too many questions. then mm -hmm. folks would be angry and would be rioting in the streets. When I watched the Akala video the first time, I was mostly just stunned. I was just like, like all the faces, all the faces, all the faces, and, and also, I just knew it, right? Like all the things. When I watched it the second time, like I do with all movies, uh, there were different details and things I picked up, but there was also this this recognition of how good I felt mm -hmm. as a black woman. Okay. Just feeling like, yo, that's that shit. That's that's my peoples. That's what's up. That's mm -hmm. like the rebellion in Haiti. Mm -hmm. The just all of the different concepts and the mathematics and the medicine. Africans being the first to travel and end up in the Americas. Our faces being found historically on different continents and proof that we were more than just, you know, mud huts and whatever bullshit that, you know, just the nonsense, the, the, the depravity, the lack of humanity and, and invention and innovation and knowledge and understanding, like this concept that black people were Neanderthals. 
before we were, you know. Yeah, no, it's a that type of history is demoralized. Yeah, and so watching and it's fact based. Just it's not like someone wrote a story like Hollywood does, right? Like Hollywood does fan fiction or <laughs> um, kind of historical fiction, but really mostly fiction because of so much erasure and when you put white faces and black spaces and um, you completely change the narrative of what happened, you are forcing on people what you are telling them to believe Sorry. about themselves and about others. Sorry. And so watching the Akala video and having that moment of like more, even more clarity, right? Cause we're all about fact finding and truths. And so, like, there was more truth that was revealed. It just. <sighs> now, I want to, like, so some of the, like, key points he talked about not, um, was that if you don't believe anything, um, ask yourself why. Like, if it seems like it's just so far-fetched and impossible, like, black mm -hmm. people could not possibly have built pyramids and been a part of that. And, and like, we just saying that to make ourselves feel better. Like, you Aliens. guys don't really have it. Like, like, think about it. Like, why are you saying that? Why would you think that? And and if you can't come up with any other answer but just they really, they couldn't do it, I think you need to I think examine that, uh, examine that more closely, and then I think you will find that it's the way you've been taught. It's the way we all have been taught in this country, and I'll say specifically this country, but globally it's, it has an impact too. But I'm just talking about what I know. Specifically here, we've been taught through omission, right, that we weren't as valuable, that we didn't have as much say in the trajectory of our of our of our world, yeah. And you, you, if you think about, we're in a country that claims to be the, uh, what, what is it, the, the home of the brave, land of the free, I can't. The, democracy, and how that's very contradiction is seen is evident everywhere we look, and especially in black and brown uh, um, lives. Why would we not know about Toussaint Louis Vuitton and the Haitian Revolution, or the Where, badass women? Toussaint Louis Vuitton and the bad women that that fought with him, that were generals in his army. Facts. What? Facts. What? Why wouldn't we know that? Why wouldn't we know that? Why wouldn't we know about the Jamaican Revolution? Right? Over 60,000 Jamaicans took up arms, took up arms to bring change yeah. in, 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 in their country. But back yeah. to two, but back to Tucson Louis Vuitton, if you think about an entire population that had been enslaved, yeah. took up arms yeah. against the military might of the time and took their country. Overturned the government and created their own government. The created only the, time in history. The only time in history that is ever One recorded time. to happen. Like, we know, I listen, I'll be, I'll be perfectly frank with you. I didn't know about Tucson Louis Vuitton. I didn't know nothing about it. I, I, I had to become a grown man before I knew who he was and what happened and what that revolution was about. But guess who I didn't know about? I knew about Spartacus. <laughs> I knew about him. I knew about the I knew about the enslaved um <laughs> you know gladiator who 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 took oh. his gladiators out and and, oh. and raised uh, havoc over Italy. I knew about that. Yeah. Right? White mm -hmm. man, you know, run around, he's taking yeah. over, he he ends up dying um and his whole army was was hung, but yeah. I knew about that. He couldn't change the government, but I don't know about Tucson mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton and all that fighting that happened there. All that all those lives that were lost, all the blood that was shed. Like listen. History our his our personal history tells us who we are. Being self reflective, looking at where you've been and what you've been through and experienced in life tells you who you are today and how you show up. Right? You live your history because it's in you, it's in how you speak, it's in how you move, what you value, what you do versus what you don't do. It's the same thing for our society. Like we're living in our history. Right? And if we don't know the whole history, what are we living? We're living a narrative pushed by somebody else. We live in a narrative yeah. that values one over someone else, and it's been so corruptive and violent towards black and brown people yep. its entire time. And I think that it's time, like having these conversations and just breaking out and talking about history. I love to do this, um, and I yeah. want to do what I would love to do this it a lot more. This is your jam. Yeah, nah, I love it. I love it's it. Not I love usually it. my jam. But listen, culturally responsive education. What does that even mean? Ooh. Culturally responsive education and reflective. What does that even mean? And reflective. What does that even mean? And uh, for what are our kids learning in school right now? What books do they have? What is their curriculum? Like right now, we know for certain that in our school district in Schenectady, they have now 
made the responsibility. They have, what, watered down the responsibilities of CRE, yeah, right? Yeah, I just, I don't know that I can even go to the whole concept of um, Bochniak, that's his name, right? Uh, who restructured the school district out of no necessity, just, I mean, um, just had to, um, and changed the structures and said, oh, now everyone's responsible for CRE, but not everybody knows about CRE, culturally respect, re responsive, culturally reflective education. Not everyone is understanding, because if they were, we wouldn't have needed one person to guide them in the first place, because it's not something that's readily available or taught in college when you know teachers are becoming teachers. Uh, and the curriculum that is deemed necessary for students to understand to graduate, right? So what children are, are told, hey, you must know these things to prove that you are smart enough to have a high school diploma and be college or career ready, that these are the facts that you must know, um, even in, inside math, which by the way, the Egyptians had figured out pi well before anybody else did, fact. Um, but nobody knows that. Like, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That there's papyrus that is way older than some other shit. And it was actually a high school level kind of textbook. It was a classroom. We don't even know if they did better than that, than the 3.16 they had made mm -hmm. without calculators. Mm -hmm. uh, but our books, our <laughs> the tests, everything says, here is the information that is necessary for you to be college and career ready, for you to be a contributing member of society, here's the information you need to know. I currently am suing New York State, and when I was deposed by the AG's office, uh, the question came up, you know, about, oh, well, do you think that um, your child um, would be able to um, have the information necessary to vote? Uh-huh. That's it? Um, yeah, that was part of what they felt would prove that the school district is doing what they need to do and they don't need additional funding, that the state isn't negligent in its responsibilities, that my children have not suffered at the hands of the state, which they have. Um, so, yeah, would they be able to vote? Would they be able to serve on a jury? These were the questions asked mm -hmm. to prove whether or not the sound basic education they were receiving was adequate, underfunded more than $40 million in Schenectady, over $30 million in Albany and over, nah, Nearly 20 or so. that's what I'm saying. So these are the things that they feel prove whether or not a school district is doing what they should. Um, that shows what? Up. And that shows up. That shows up in real time. So And, and vote for who? And yeah, vote exactly. based on what information? Exactly. Um, as we're coming up on elections in short order with a two-party system where both of them are capitalists. I said what I said. You think about the way, like what you just said. That's what they value. Hey, do you know where to vote? Do you know how to vote? Do you know how to get on or what it means? Uh, not what it means, but what the grand Could jury is. Could you serve? No, it wasn't. <laughs> even, even, it was not do you know what a jury is? Could you serve? Could you serve? On a jury. Oh, do I know that? Like it's it. Could <laughs> is that, is that could, a could one of my children be, serve on a jury? Do I feel crazy. as if they will have enough knowledge and information to serve on a jury? What the fuck that got to do with serving on a jury? Is you listening to information and deciding, you know, whether or not the DA has presented their case beyond a reasonable doubt? What's that got to do with my child's education? Mm -hmm. What what did you teach them that would qualify that? as opposed to maybe teaching them about systems and structures and how they work and the history, the actual history of where we come from, where there are revolutions and rebellions and enslaved people freed themselves and created their own government, overthrew a government mm -hmm. to prove the strength and determination and the humanity they deserved in themselves. Mm -hmm. Home of the free and the brave? Right? Like, if we value freedom, why not lift up stories of radical freedom? Why not? Why I'm not? Gonna, I got yes, answer. I'm, I'm going to ask. I mean, I think I got an Go answer. Go ahead, what tell me. Next, well, well, Trick question. Well, because it actually, it flies in the face of everything else they could teach. It flies in the face of white supremacy. I mean, in all honesty, think about it. If I, if, if 
I'm if they are teaching um, us that we have a history that is noble and brave and just as proud as any other history it's so smart. in the world, like how does that kind of jive with the justification for slavery and justification for black code and Jim Crow and convict leasing and mass incarceration and the war on drugs and the war on poverty and all this idea that somehow we have come here and have been given opportunity and have been found lacking. Like, that flies in the face of that. Like, right. you can't tell that history. Yeah. Right? That you, you history can't... upturns your realities yeah. or the reality that you're attempting to create because remember, power is the ability to create a reality and then make others believe it. Yeah, imagine if all teachers and all students had to watch a college video. <laughs> Let's start there. Let's just had to watch a college video and realize that black children have the ability to excel and have the same level of knowledge as their ancestors that they could build pyramids, that they could solve complex mathematical equations, that they could create- They were inventors of complex mathematical equations. Founders. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and, and that the, <laughs> the sculptures in ancient Egypt and other places that all the noses are missing are not because of geological occurrences or weather it was because they were destroyed because of looking too black. And that they were symbols of the people. Like, imagine like a teacher looking at a child and thinking, wow, I wonder what they're gonna invent because you know, I know they come from a long line of really smart people. As opposed to looking at our black and brown children and being like, Oh, you're just, you better go to a community college if you get there. Or, oh, you're just going to be so problematic. Or, oh, there's just, oh, oh. Like, if our teachers walked into a room with anticipation and hope based on the history they learned, I bet I just got really loud on Facebook. Maybe. But, I, but I'll be honest with you, if they learned that history, they'd be more black and brown teachers. Right? They'd be more black and brown teachers in the room teaching the children that are a reflection of who they are. Yeah. And this isn't about, this is not saying that there are no, you know, teachers that actually, you know, do the work and are well meaning and actually that are come from different Oh, backgrounds there are some amazing teachers. Of course there are. There are also some really fucked up teachers that shouldn't be teaching yeah. anyone's child, regardless of race. And not, and <laughs> we all learned the same history and the same social cues and social hierarchy growing up. Yeah. Something was different for you and I. At some point in our lives, we went, this ain't okay and I'm not buying it anymore. Yeah. And, and we dug deeper or as well as had, well, I'll speak for me, I statements. I also had additional outside influences. Other people who talked to me about systems and structures that talked to me about history that talk to me about the full history of Malcolm X, the full history of MLK, the full history of, I don't know, people like Ida B. Wells, just powerful people who did extraordinary things. Fred Hampton being a powerful young black man, really young, a teenager. Like, those were things that I wasn't aware of and learning them changed my thinking and changed my approach. And they're facts. It's not propaganda. It's not like um, <laughs> crazy black people that are just trying to feel good about themselves. Uh, no, like we're robbed of information because it challenges the dominant narrative. It challenges capitalism. It challenges those who are in power. Because if more people knew facts about history, facts about systems and structures, there'd be a revolution. There'd be an uprising. Revolution of the mind. I think, and also of the bodies. Like I, and I get it, right? And I've well, heard it this. It starts in the mind, right? You gotta yeah. first believe it. Yeah. Before you actually think you can change anything, yeah. you gotta believe that you can make it happen. Yeah. People, I've people have said to me, 
oh, well, you know, the U.S. has the greatest military force, like no civilian rebellion could go against the military force. I believe that those individuals that currently serve in the military would be some of those same folks that would be with us. If they so too knew the things that are coming to light, if they realized the inequities that happen that are intentional, if they realize the the worth that they have beyond what they've been conditioned and that the violence they perpetuate against other people for the profit of a small number of individuals because our military is not out there fighting for our freedom. I am going way off track. But these are the types of things that came up, like, Watching that yeah, video and thinking about history and thinking about its long-standing impact. Our it, history is important. So many to things. Know. No, it's, it's important to know, and it has implications everywhere. Yeah. Right? It has implications for everyone in the country. It has implications for everyone in the world. If we begin to educate what our history truly is, if we begin to yeah. value everyone's history and what their contributions were, where are we going to go next? Yeah. Like, literally, this isn't just about so for Like, what I said a second ago was, like, doing that, it, it kind of, it upturns the hierarchy and what we already know. That threatens the power structure, right? That threatens the narrative that's often pushed along all lines, both on racial, uh, gender, class. It threatens that narrative, right? And people that are in power who are doing well in this narrative I like. Wait a minute. What? What y'all? What y'all? Don't what change y'all anything. About? Nah, this is we good. <laughs> what you mean? Like, what do you mean? Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You'll be fine. So those six people that you were talking about, the six people that own forty two percent of the wealth, they just picked themselves up Walton. by their bootstraps, Walton. and they were good. Like, come on, be serious, man. Be serious. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if the numbers like seventy percent of Americans don't have like a thousand dollars to save in their bank account. Like, how is this working for any of us in any real sense? Like, the majority of us, it's not, these narratives are not working for us. These yeah. narratives have been constructed to divide. Like, don't think of this as some mad scientist in a room, the bald head and devising plans. No, this thing happened over time. Right. Right? It happened over time. A lot of it, like, when I'm just thinking about race itself, when I talk about the brutality of slavery, like, that had to be justified. Think about it. A country that said it fought for its independence based on liberty and fighting against tyranny still had men, women, and children enslaved. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hell of a contradiction. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, believing in the, like, I'm not going to go too much into the church, but believing in this idea of, 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 of Christianity, that's a mm -hmm. contradiction. Mm -hmm. So you have to justify that. At some level, you, you have to justify that. And that justification comes, oh, they're not really human in the first place. We ain't got to treat them different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They don't really deserve it. If they don't own that, they're not, they're not human in the way we are. They're not valuable people. Right? And I think that brings it back to, you know, black history is the lost history of human history. Right? And Akala's video bringing to light facts of history and not just of Egypt. Let's be real. It wasn't just Egypt. And I actually printed out a map of Africa because I didn't know where all the places were. So when he was talking about Ethiopia and Nigeria and the Sudan, I was like, I know those are places. I don't know where they are relative to Africa. Um, they are not right next to Egypt. It's not like, oh, they're right next to Egypt. So that makes sense. Right. Um, or that when he spoke about the first king actually came from upper Africa, which to us would be Southern Africa before white people were there, right? That the first Kings came from there and influenced Egypt, that those types of things, that type of information, factual history, as well as his, his topics on the Moors invading Spain another history and controlling that. Spain up until, I don't know, Columbus. Yeah. Literally, um, seven to eight hundred years, Moorish lords ruled Spain and didn't relinquish power until 1492. Had built up so much wealth there and, and had passed off um, to yeah. its new leaders. Like you had opportunities. Yeah. Like this is history. So, so I'm but, just gonna show yeah, you all so, Yeah. So here's Spain over here. That's their Spain. 
um, and then we got Egypt over here, um, and then way down here, First Kings, the first, first, first Kings, um, and the Sudan, and yeah, um, Su Sudan's over this way, um, so not next to Egypt. Yeah, like um, no, just no. This this concept of whitewashing history, I think, is not even fair to say anymore because whitewashing I think is like Egypt right like they were like oh Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra yeah. get the fuck out of my face um but that was the first like I can remember because I'm old I'll be 46 next month I remember seeing Elizabeth Taylor playing an Egyptian woman and that was that was reality we all watched them cast the mummy and Emotep, who is one of the greatest minds in history and was a very black man based on pictures and statues of Emotep that exist, did not look like the actor that played Emotep. No. Um, all of the just different <laughs> ways that they show up and say, Egyptians are going to look white presenting and all of the slaves and enslaved people are going to be dark skinned. Also not accurate. And we do know that slavery happened in different places across the globe. Um, it just was really, really fucked up the way the U.S. did it <laughs> and how like it's it was a whole nother beast. But nobody talks about the realities of life before America or how Africa was booming and had essentially skyscrapers while Europeans were living in huts. Let's just say it and like I'll that. Be, I'll be honest with you. It's like, it's like the title of, uh, you know, Kala's um, PowerPoint introduction. And I'll take the last part. It's the human history. Like it's human history. Like my history is no more valuable or, or than this person or that person. Um, it is history. It is truth. And if you decided to frame it in a particular way, you had a purpose and intent in doing that. And that has ramifications, right? That's had ramifications to perpetuate the power structure for the last 400 years in this country. Uh, in the last, however, you know, since um, the Declaration of Independence, it's perpetuated as against quote unquote Americans. Um, folks that live here um it's it's for me I, I think that it's time for us to know our history to have this conversation it's time to make sure not only we are having this conversation we we i'm in my 40s right these young these young people coming up right now who don't know this and once again yeah. education doesn't just happen in the school books right it doesn't just happen at that structure it happens here right now this is yeah. the type of education it happens in the family. It happens in the home. It happens in our community. It happens while you're watching TV, when you're looking at your commercials. All of that pushes a narrative to you, yeah. right? It's all about storytelling. Our, like, human beings... Proctors. I'm sorry. I Proctors, yeah. Proctors impacts our communities. Say more. So there are business and structures like the media, like the TU, like the Daily Gazette, also like Proctors that have impacts on our local communities and how they interact with them and what they lift up and what they, how they choose to represent themselves, how they choose to interact with their employees, um, how they treat those that they're in contact with. Um, some may have heard the story um, about what happened where one employee was very vocal about how she was treated as a black woman and the things that she saw, which were racist. But somehow now Proctors is leading an anti-racism initiative. If you're accused of racism, you shouldn't be the one leading anti-racism. You should be the one receiving it. That like now we're, oh good, they're doing this. You just got called out for racism and Proctors has impact on our children and our community. They offer theatrical programs. They are seen as you know a, a center of the community. Well, this center of the community has a very direct impact on where funding goes, yeah. who it goes to, um, what children are taught when they're in that space, how children are taught when they're in that space. Um, 
are they aware of culturally responsive and reflective educating in that space? I doubt it. The Daily Gazette, the TU, how they tell stories, the words that they use when they're speaking in their unbiased way, right? Every reporter is a person. So they have bias. I, I don't care how good you are. I have bias. And I do my best to, you know, check it. And we still show up. Education is coming from all aspects and including TV. And if we don't hold all of them accountable, our textbooks, our schools, our teachers, how they teach, what they teach, our media, both print and live. What up? and major organizations and their impact, like Proctor's or any of the nonprofits, how they educate and impact our communities and what they are perpetuating. They are educating expectations. It's all of that, right? All of them have been impacted by what they were taught and then they are perpetuating those same systems out towards the community every single day and often they are seen as saviors look at the great things that this fill in the name of a nonprofit organization is doing for poor black people and their boards are all white yeah what yeah and even when there are people of color involved in organizations two things happen one they're handpicked to be respectable and and just, you know, they go with the status quo and they don't ruffle too many feathers. And two, they were also raised inside the same systems and structures as everybody else. So they have no reason until they have a reason to challenge the dominant narrative. Our education is everywhere. And it perpetuates, I think. I fucking hate Hollywood. It perpetuates the same structures that cause so much harm and show up in different spaces. Like I said, maybe the, maybe we should have an like to talk about how these structures are affected by education in a different way, in, in a way that I think because this is complex, this is a complex it conversation. Um, the impact of how we're educated, how we are socialized, shows up everywhere. Once again, who you are is based on what your experiences were, what you learned, how you were taught. Up to this moment today, you are walking, living history of yourself, right? Of your life, you walking in that history. Um, it's the same thing in our society and our community. We are living as a reflection of what has happened historically in our community. Yeah. So if you think about, so why in so many of these communities upstate right now, black ownership of, of their homes is, is down? Why does Schenectady City School District like have, a, 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 you know, are enjoying a 66% graduation rate? I don't know what it was this year, but I know the last one I saw was 66% and they was happy. Because it was up from 50. Think about that. And we have more than 70% of our students are students of color where, I don't know, we're rocking 80 plus percent white teachers. Uh, and there's lots of reasons these things happen. And I feel like one of the reasons why this conversation was important today is because school's going to be starting again. In, in a different way, right? COVID is still real. We are still fighting this pandemic. Um, school districts are making choices about what happens. Schenectady School District is doing a hybrid model where some students are going to go into the classroom and some students are gonna be 100% virtual. And the students that go into the classroom are only going for half a day, so they're not even there for the full day, but they are there long enough to congregate with hundreds of other people, including the adults, staff, and other individuals who could be passing COVID because how many children are gonna leave their masks on and how, how possible is it for the cleaning staff to clean every single desk between classes? And I know that there were videos that the Schenectady super temporary superintendent did to, to answer questions and talk about safety precautions and and all of that stuff, and we're gonna have less children in buildings with staff, and some of those staff are at risk because of either their age or pre-existing health conditions. So we're sacrificing adults to say, 
we we should do this even though we don't have to um to teach them things that are racist you know this is this time we living in i don't like i don't know if we oftentimes you know take a moment to just stop and think about this moment in history that we're in both with the heightened sense of uh, racial injustice with this pandemic going on um and and this impact in our communities and i think that we should be concerned with the trajectory of all, everything that we're seeing out here especially the education of our young people especially um with this kind of lack of programs and investments in our communities that are leaving our children further and further and further behind like don't come tell me about um you know some nonsense that oh well the violent crime is up so we need more police in your community and not invest once again i say it and i say it again i heard this such long ago and it just makes so much sense it ain't the increase of the police is going to change anything we've been doing that for years, for generations. The police have to the point now where they are they can actively militarize in our communities. They already have. Right? They can actively militarize in our communities. That ain't stopping nobody from shooting nobody right now. No. What stops that shit is better education, better Having housing, better jobs, better programs. Anything that in like investing in the community is the way forward. Yeah. This yeah. idea that we somehow have to always be punitive in black and brown communities and show up in military gear, vest on, with our guns ready to go. Like Wisconsin, the brother, oh my God. Don't. I don't even want to, like, so we don't got time, it's 46. We have 46 right now. But the violence yeah. that we see in our community, both perpetuated by those in our community and those who come from outside of our community to do harm, state sanctioned harm are outgrowths of the same type of education that we're talking about. This is the impact. This is literally about, we're not just talking about, oh, it's good to know this stuff. This stuff changes lives. This is not just about, oh, I, I, get the, I, got, I got a little fun fact about history. No. The way we value ourselves, the way other people value us, is directly linked to how we've been educated and socialized in our community and our society, period. Like I said, education ain't just in the school building. It's in the home. It's in your. It's in. It's on your TV. It's on. It's on the freaking commercials and the movies. All that shit you watch. Think about what you watch. Who the heroes are. Who's who's omitted from many of the stories. What about history? Do you really know that has anything to value? If you black or brown, has anything of value for you? Think about that. That's why we. This is. It's. It's bigger than just what happened in the immediate act of violence. Like I said, we are walking reflections of our history. How we get, how do we get to that point of violence? How do we get to the point that as black men, and I speak for black men, I speak for myself, that when I was younger and I seen other black men in other spaces, I seen them as my enemy, not my brother or my friend or as neutral. I seen them as someone who might have to get it if he act up. This false sense of manhood, this false sense of what's tough and what's not is rooted and white supremacy and the education that we got. This idea of what it is to be a man ain't based on some how tough you are. It's how much has how well you can think, how much you can love, how much you can care, how much you can build. That don't mean we got to destroy at some points because that's a part of building. But you need to be able to build because destruction is easy. Destruction is easy. It's easy to tear something right? down. It's easy to tear some shit down. What's hard? Right? It's harder to build. It's harder to construct something valuable, construct something sustainable, Str construct something that fucking matters. Like, this is for me of what education means. It ain't just about getting a fucking job. It ain't just yeah. about. A job for what? Yeah, it ain't just about, you know, learning how to, for what one plus one, right? It ain't yeah. just about those things, how to count your money in your bank account. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. And if you look out in our communities where it's black, brown, and poverty, and you see the violence, and you see the poverty, why do you think it's like, do you think that they out there because they they just decided that I want to do this in my life? I'm not, I, I, I don't care. So. We were sold a, a bill of goods. And it is detrimental to the most of us, um, especially the least of us. I say this a lot, 
Had we not been limited by racism, imagine the wonderful things that we could have already achieved. The one that hits home a lot right now is we probably could have cured cancer if there wasn't racism, if there wasn't oppression and exploitation. If we didn't limit people based on their differences and determine who was smart enough to do something and deny access to resources and opportunities to individuals, there's some geniuses out there that never had a chance. That's what history has an impact on. When we break down the barriers that say a certain group of people is not capable and only one group of people is capable, we deny ourselves. We deny the people around us. Akala talks about it. If you didn't watch the video, watch the video. If you are not paying attention to what's going on in your school district, pay attention to what's going on in your school district. Uh, there is a direct connection between our schools and our justice system, which we will talk about another time. I was talking with y'all. Um, watch that video. Don't just watch that video. Watch it. Investigate it. Don't think just about take it. our word for it. Be reflective. Talk about think it with critically. other folks. Yeah. Think critically. Um, it's important that we know this. It's important that our young people know it. That's it. Sign off. You want to sign off? Laters. Later.